So what I want to do now is talk a little bit more about the concept of type coercion and also something called type conversion. So because JavaScript is dynamically typed, we've already seen that if we were trying to perform operations with values of different types. So for example, if we're trying to add a string to a number, JavaScript will do some type coercion. And in that case, it's going to convert the number into a string and you're going to get string concatenation. So for example, we've already seen this, but const num1 equals, let's say the string 135. And let's say we do something like const num2 is equal to, let's say the number 15. And let's do const sum is equal to, we'll do num1. And I didn't mean to do that. So num1 plus num2, okay? And if I console.log the sum variable, let's think about what's gonna happen. So JavaScript encounters these values here of different types. So this 135 is a string, okay? And then it also has 15, which is a number, okay? So it has to make a decision. And in this case, it's going to decide to convert this 15 into a string, okay? And then it's going to do string concatenation. So you're gonna end up with 135 as a string with one five slapped on the end. So you can think about this as the number 13,515 as a string. So let me wrap this in some quotes here to make that clear. And then if I even do console.log, I do the type of operator and then sum, again, it's gonna look inside the sum variable. It's gonna have this string 13,515. So the value there is a string. So it's going to return string here, right? When I run this. So let's open up the terminal and let's run this. And we do in fact get 13,515 and then as a string. So let me minimize this real quick. I wanna pop over to MDN. And I want to go to this page with the title of type coercion. Okay, I'm going to link this in the description, so don't worry about trying to find it. So type coercion is the automatic or implicit conversion of values from one data type to another, such as strings to numbers. So we just saw that, right? So if we go down here to the examples, it's exactly what we just looked at. They have the string five and the number nine. So JavaScript will coerce the number nine into the string nine, and then it concatenates the two strings together. Okay, so it ends up with the string 59. So we have already seen that. But what I want to talk about today is the type conversion. Okay, so this is similar to type coercion because they both convert values from one data type to another. But the key difference is that type coercion is implicit. Okay, so this is happening behind the scenes, whereas the type conversion can be implicit or explicit. Okay, so we're going to focus on the type conversion or the type casting, like some people call it, where it's explicit. Okay, so we're manually going to tell JavaScript what to do. So how can we override this result here? Well, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I'm going to start with the first way that we already talked about. There's something built into JavaScript. It's a function where you type in number, okay? And then I'm going to wrap this in parentheses. So what this is going to do is it's going to attempt to convert this inside of parentheses into a number, okay? If it can, it's going to give you not a number, and I'll show you that in a moment. But basically what I want to do is comment all this out for one second. So control forward slash. That's going to comment all that out. And I'm just going to go console.log and I'm going to go num1. Okay. And I'm also going to console.log the type of operator and then num1. So let's just look at this output real quick. So we're going to clear this and run it real quick. And you get 135 and it's a number. Okay. So that's pretty interesting. Now, another way that you could do this, and actually before I do that, let me show you what happens. Again, we should know this already because I already showed you. But let's say you type the word four. JavaScript does not know that the word four is a representation of the number four, okay? So it doesn't know what to do here. So it's just going to give you a result of not a number, okay? So not a number. And when you see the type of operator applied to not a number, you get number, okay? So you can think of not a number as an invalid number or a number that you can't perform a calculation with, okay? So what I'm gonna do is change this back to 135. And I'm gonna show you a different way to do this. So what I'm gonna do is just put the plus sign out in front, okay? I'm gonna delete these parentheses, I don't need them. And what this plus sign out in front is going to do, it's going to attempt to convert what's behind it here into a number. Okay, so if I pop open the terminal and clear this and run this, I get 135, okay? So whether you use that number that I just did or the plus sign here, the result is the same. And let me comment this out and let me uncomment this out. And let's think about the result now. So if I add num1 to num2, I'm going to now have the number 135, because this plus sign out in front is gonna convert it, okay? Then plus I'm gonna have the number 15, so I should get 150, okay? And then the type of 150, this is a number, so I should get number. So let's go ahead and run this guy. 
and we get 150 and number as expected. And again, if I went back to this being number, okay, it's going to give me the exact same result. So it's just really a quicker way to do it and less typing, okay? But you can do it either way, it doesn't matter. So let's get rid of this, and I wanna talk about a, another way to do this. So we have parse int and we have parse float, okay? So let me use a decimal number, so something like 135.995, okay? Something really close to 136. Let's say I did something like parse int, okay? And I'm just gonna wrap this inside of parentheses, okay? And I'm going to uncomment this, and I'm going to recomment this. Again, I'm holding down control and hitting the forward slash, okay? And so if I pop this open and I clear this and run this, you just get 135 in number. So a lot of people don't understand what's going on there. And basically with parse int, it's going to take the numbers or the digits after this decimal point and get rid of them, okay? So it's just like you had 135. It doesn't do any rounding or anything like that. We have a way to round in JavaScript, and I'll show you that here in a moment. But basically, it doesn't do any rounding or anything like that. It does not preserve these digits after the decimal point, okay? If you do the plus sign or the number, it will preserve it, okay? So let's go ahead and pop this open, run this. You see it preserves it, okay? Now, if I change this to number, again, it will preserve it, okay? So let's go ahead and pop this open, clear this and run this, and it preserves it. The parse int is very useful in JavaScript. So we'll get to that later on, but you do need it. You might think, well, why would I ever wanna cut all these digits off? Believe me, you will in some situations, okay? So we also have parse float, okay? That's another way that you can keep these guys. So parse float, if we pop this open and clear this and run this, same thing, right? 135.995, okay. So I promised you that I would show you how to round. So let's get rid of this. First off, if I just do math with a capital M dot round, and I put a string in here, something like 135 point, let's do 998, okay? What JavaScript's gonna do is it's gonna see that you're attempting to do a math operation on a string. So it's gonna do some type coercion and try to convert this to a number if it can, okay? And so if we pop this open, it's gonna round that to 136 for us, okay? And you see that the type of is giving us number, okay? So that's your type coercion in action. Now, you can explicitly convert it first before you run this rounding operation. Again, that's something you can do. I always prefer to do that and not rely on JavaScript because in some cases you might make a mistake or an error and then later on you're in your program and you can't figure out what's going on. So it can cause a lot of bugs that are really hard to track down. So I always recommend doing something like this where you would do number and even though JavaScript will convert it for you, okay, you can convert it on your own and then you're sure that nothing's gonna go wrong, right? So now I'm rounding a number because let's say I put something in here, like let's say four, again, this is going to give me not a number, right? If you ever try to perform a math operation and it's on something that it can't convert, you're gonna get not a number, okay? So let's get rid of this and let's go back to this 135.59 or something like that, just a decimal number. And again, let's just see the full thing. So if we parse float, and I'm just going to wrap this inside of some parentheses. And I put my semicolon in the wrong place. And let's come down here. I'm going to get rid of this for right now. Don't need it anymore. And I'm going to take these and uncomment them out. So control forward slash, okay? And if we run this, we get 135.59 plus 15, which would be 150.59, okay? So if we open this up, clear it, and run it, we get 150.59. Again, if you put parse int in there, you would just get 150, right? Because it would strip this part off and you would have 135 plus 15, which is 150. Okay, so before we get into converting a number into a string, I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. So I'm just gonna do one really long example. And so we need to think about the fact that outside of addition, all the math operations are going to attempt to convert strings to numbers because you're trying to perform some mathematical operation. So let's do const num1 is equal to 14 as a string. Let's do const num2 is equal to, let's do seven as a string, okay? And I'm gonna go const result is, well, actually let's do it like this. Let's go console.log. And I'm just gonna do all of these. So I'm going to go num1, and I'm gonna go minus num2, okay? And then I'll do, let's just go ahead and copy it, paste it a few times. And we'll go through subtraction, 
let's do multiplication, let's do division, let's do the remainder operator. I'm not gonna do exponentiation because that would be a really large number. So let's just do these four, okay? And we're gonna see that we get a conversion to a number in each case. If we pop this open and clear this and run this, we get seven, which is the result of 14 minus seven. We get 98, which is 14 times seven. We get two, which is 14 divided by seven. And we get zero, which is the remainder from dividing 14 by seven. Okay, so that should be clear. I wanna do one more thing here. I wanna just go const, let's go result is equal to, and I'm gonna do something like 15 as a string, plus five as a number, minus 25 as a number, divided by five, okay? So I want you to pause the video and think hard about what this is going to do. What will be the result if I go console.log result? Okay, so hopefully you gave that a shot. And basically you wanna first start to think about the order of operations. So we have a plus, a minus, and a divide by. So the division has the highest priority. So first, JavaScript is gonna say, what is 25 divided by five? That's five. So you have the string 15 plus five minus five, okay? So next you have addition and subtraction, same level of priority, they're worked left to right. So first JavaScript will go, okay, I have plus, I have a string, I have a number. Let's convert five, the number, into the string five. So you would have the string 15 plus the string five minus five. So then this would be string concatenation. So you'd have 155 as a string minus five. When you get to the subtraction, again, if you do math operations outside of addition with strings, it's gonna attempt to convert them to numbers. So now you would have 155 as a number minus five, which would give me 150, okay? So if I pop open the terminal here, I do in fact get 150, okay. So let's quickly talk about converting a number into a string, which does happen, but not as often as you need to convert a string into a number. So there are quite a few ways to do this. I'm not gonna cover all of them. I'm just gonna cover some that are basic. So basically if I start with something like const, let's say the number 15, Okay, and I want to, I forgot to declare variable. So let's say num1 is equal to the number 15. So let's say that I want to convert this into a string. So if I console.log my num1 variable, num1 variable, and I console.log the type of, okay, this guy right here, well, right now I'm going to get 15 and I'm going to get number. Okay, so if I clear this and run this, I get 15 and number. Now, if I come up here and just type, string with a capital S, okay, just like before we typed number with a capital N, now we're typing string with a capital S. If I pull this back open, clear this and run this, I get 15 and now it's a string, okay? So that's one way that you can convert it. This is again a function that's built into JavaScript. We'll talk about functions more later on. For right now, let's just use that. And then we also have something called to string, okay? So I'm gonna type 15 again. Now this is gonna give you an error if you directly put dot, okay, to string like this with parentheses, okay? See how it's lighting up as an error, okay? You don't wanna do that. So you can fix this by just putting a space here, okay? And that will actually fix this. So, and I put the dot next to it. So you have to put the space and then dot to string like that. So that will actually fix this error. So let's go ahead and pop open the terminal, clear this and run this and you get 15 and it's a string, okay? So I want you to make sure now you put the dot and then two, this is lowercase, string has an S that's uppercase, okay, and you need parentheses. A lot of people will misspell this, okay? And I'm gonna link all these in the description so you can use them. The other thing you can do is you can wrap this in parentheses, okay? And then it will work as well. So you can go ahead and clear this and run this and you get 15 in a string. All right, so one last thing that I wanna focus on here before we conclude, you could also do let me just go ahead and change this back to the number 15, okay? And I'm going to go const string one is equal to, I'm going to use some back ticks here, and I'm just gonna say my string number is dollar sign curly braces, and I'm gonna put num one in there, okay? So it's going to convert this guy into a string for me. If I console.log the type of operator with this string one variable, it's gonna look at the value held there, and this guy, this value is going to be a string, okay? It's gonna convert that to a string for me. So if I go console.log, the string one variable, and then console.log, I'm gonna go ahead and do the type of operator, and then the string one variable. And again, if we pop this open, 
and we run this, we get my string is 15 or my string number is 15. And again, this is in white. And then you see that it is a string. 